Michael, we'll start with you on the right. I know a lot of people are already tired of uh, hearing about the presidential race. What do each of these candidates have to do to win, number one, and maybe more basic than that, keep people's interest between now and November? Michael? These are the dog days of, of a campaign, and I, I don't think that you have to have people's interest now. What, what you have to have their interest in is in the fall come time to vote. And neither one of these candidates are very exciting. That's just a fact. But what Romney has to do to win is he has to focus people on Obama's record. And to the extent that he can get the the media and the American public to stop focusing on racism or silliness or sex scandals in Colombia and focus on the actual Obama track record, Romney wins. There's no doubt in my mind. To the left, a Norman. This is like political Guantanamo Bay here. We're going to be subjected to seven months of political torture. I think a lot of people have tuned out, and they won't tune back in until after Labor Day, and there's not a lot the candidates can do about it. Uh, the problem that the Republicans have is they've alienated everybody except old white men. The gender gap is huge. Women know <laughs> that they're coming for their bodies. Uh, Latinos know that there's racism afoot. I mean, they've alienated the gays. They've alienated everybody but just old white men, especially in the South. Romney's got a very narrow path. He's pretty much taken every position on every issue. Nobody trusts him. You know what you get with the president. His problem, the president's problem, is an enthusiasm gap. A lot of the people who were, you know, for him aren't for him now. I hit the gong. (laughs) Michael Berry, do Republicans have to do anything more to win than to say, get Barack Obama out of the White House? You know, I think that's the number one policy. That's what motivates people. Um, but I think you have to show a direction, and I think you have to show that your policies work. And and that's going to be one of those that, – that's the argument that you have to make. Lower taxes spur investment. And to the extent that Republicans can get Americans focused on facts, Republicans can win. The problem is when you got the referee calling fouls before the play ever starts, it's tough. With With the media doing what they do, it makes it an extra burden. But I think the American public is a lot smarter this time. You can't win with hope and change or yes, we can. Norman? Well, the problem is the facts favor the president. And, you know, if uh, Romney can't do something to explain what he really is, and is is there really a person inside of him, he's done. He's already toast. His negatives are at historic lows. He's taken every position on every issue. The president's going to hammer him on that. He's got no foreign policy experience. And, you know, a lot of people still like the president personally and are willing to give him a pass. They know The nation will be professionally uh, run for the next four years. And unless Romney can give a very compelling reason for a change, the economy's on the mend. People are going to give this president extra leeway and a lot of pass. Romney has already lost a lot of big states. The president's already got 230 electoral votes. Romney's got 190. He's in deep trouble. Norman, another subject, the Supreme Court and Arizona's immigration law. It appears they're leaning to support it. If that happens, do other states adopt? Oh, absolutely they do. And in fact, this is going to be a disaster again for Mitt Romney, because right in the, at the end of June, the Supreme Court's going to come out and antagonize all the Latinos again. And the president's going to grab a hold of that and run a lot of Spanish language TV ads in Texas, in Florida, in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, all the places where even if it doesn't matter for the presidential election, they'll turn out and vote for congressional elections, Senate elections, local state elections. And the Republicans will be lucky to get 10% of the Latino vote. And in a lot of these states, you're not going to win much when you're getting 10% of the Latino vote. So the Supreme Court is basically going to play right into the Democrats' hands with this papers, please, you know, uh, racial profiling stuff. And it's really, really a, a gift for the Democrats, even though it's going to be an enforcement nightmare. Michael Berry. Well, I think what you're hearing is the rawest, most cynical form of politics, which is frighten people to death with the idea that enforcing the law is bad for them and that anyone who wants to enforce a law, which could have been changed if it was such a bad law, is somehow a racist. I think Americans are beyond that. And I think in the states where you talk about running those Spanish language ads, you have people where the cops and the individuals have been murdered by illegal aliens, where the cost of health care has gone up, where uninsured drivers are driving, where people are coming across in human trafficking and drug trafficking. And I think the citizens of those states, who should be the only ones voting, will say, you know what, enough of that nonsense and enough of dividing us, Barack Obama. You're supposed to be a leader, and he's not a leader. He's a divider based on racial basis, and I think that people in those states are going to recognize that. Michael Berry, bonus question for you. Fox News says the president's appearance on Jimmy Fallon this week, and specifically the slow jam the news segment, was an embarrassment, was it? 
I think it is an embarrassment. I think it's an embarrassment to the office of the presidency. And uh, I, I think it's a terrible thing. You know, I didn't criticize when Bill Clinton went on Arsenio Hall because, to me, at that point, he was a candidate. He was appealing to votes, and it was done in a somewhat classy way. But what Barack Obama did, I think, is beneath the office of the presidency. It's a traveling sideshow. And what he does is he opens himself up to attacks that he's unpresidential. And the fact of the matter is the guy's unpresidential. He lacked any experience before he got there. He's a community activist. This is a guy who's uncomfortable in the White House and being president. And when you go out and pander on that level and reduce the office, the dignity of the presidency, then you're going to expect people don't respect you. Norman. You know, for a guy who says that he's condemning all the division and the vilification and the politics, personal destruction, Mr. Berry's done a fine job in the last three minutes of doing exactly that. Now, what's really disgusting and disgraceful is when George W. Bush, the illegal illegitimate occupant of the White House, went to a White House correspondence dinner a few years back and did this comedy routine of, where are those weapons of mass destruction? I thought they were under here. I thought they were under there. This is a dude who is an international war criminal and a terrorist. George W. Bush should be in prison at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. George W. Bush lied us into a war, then had the guts and the gall to go to a White House correspondence dinner and make a bunch of jokes about the weapons of mass destruction that he knowingly lied about, which but, killed but over 4,000 Americans. Norman Goldman, Michael Berry, thanks, guys. All right, thanks as always, fellas.